Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Friends, in the last chapter, good King Jehoshaphat formed an alliance with wicked King Ahab, the king of the northern kingdom. And the result was Ahab died in the battle during this uh, alliance, the battle that occurred. Well, in this chapter we're about to read, Jehoshaphat returns safely, and then the Lord rebukes him for making the alliance with Ahab. Now, why am I telling you that in advance? Because Jehoshaphat's response to the rebuke is very different than that of other kings. You may recall in the last chapter that Ahab uh, jailed the prophet Micaiah, who said that he was going to die in the battle. And of course, Ahab did die in the battle. And uh, frequently, the kings of Israel, even good King Asa, you may recall, uh, jailed a prophet who gave a word he didn't like. But this king, Jehoshaphat, responds well to a prophetic rebuke that's really from the Lord, not from the man giving the word. So let's read 2 Chronicles chapter 19. When Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, returned safely to his palace in Jerusalem, Jehu, the seer, the son of Hanani, went out to meet him and said to the king, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Because of this, the wrath of the Lord is on you. There is, however, some good in you, for you have rid the land of the Asherah poles and have set your heart on seeking God. Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem, and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim and turned them back to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. He appointed judges in the land in each of the fortified cities of Judah. He told them, Consider carefully what you do, because you're not judging for mere mortals, but for the Lord who is with you whenever you give a verdict. Now let the fear of the Lord be on you. Judge carefully, for with the Lord our God there's no injustice or partiality or bribery. In Jerusalem also, Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites to be priests and heads of families to administer the law of the Lord and to settle disputes. And they lived in Jerusalem. He gave them these orders. You must serve faithfully and wholeheartedly in the fear of the Lord. In every case that comes before you, from your people who live in the cities, whether bloodshed or other concerns of the law, commands, decrees, or regulations, you are to warn them not to sin against the Lord. Otherwise, His wrath will come on you and your people. Do this, and you will not sin. Amariah, the chief priest, will be over you in any matters concerning the Lord. And Zebediah, son of Ishmael, the leader of the tribe of Judah, will be over you in any matter concerning the king. And the Levites will serve as officials before you. Act with courage, and may the Lord be with those who do well. So Jehoshaphat's response to a rebuke from the prophet, and the rebuke was, uh, should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord. And uh, the, the prophet said, because of this, the wrath of God is on you. Jehoshaphat responded favorably. He initiated reforms throughout the land to turn the people's hearts toward God. Let me just read the words of this chapter. Verse 1, when Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his palace in Jerusalem, safely from the battle that he went to where Ahab was struck with an arrow and bled out, Jehu the seer went out to meet him and said to the king, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Because of this, the wrath of the Lord is on you. Well, friends, we need to take note of that. Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Now, we do love those who are lost and without Jesus Christ. We love them. But we don't help them in their wickedness. We don't support them in their error. We turn them toward the Lord. We point them toward the Lord. We point them lovingly toward the Lord, and we understand that uh, sinners do what sinners do naturally without the Lord in their hearts. Uh, They do what they do, but when they're in error and when they're in rebellion to the Lord, the wrath of God is before them, and they don't realize it. So we're trying to help those who hate the Lord, um, not help them to continue in their wickedness. But the prophet says to Jehoshaphat, there's some good in you. 
because you've gotten rid of the, the places of idolatry and you have set your heart on seeking God. And so the key, the Lord saw this man's heart, even though he'd screwed up in forming an alliance with Ahab and helped a, a very wicked king, his heart was set on seeking God. You may recall that in the event with Ahab, he asked for a genuine prophet of, of Yahweh. Jehoshaphat wanted a, a real word from the Lord about their battle. And so um, Jehoshaphat then received this corrective word favorably. He received this rebuke, and he went out among the people and turned them back to the Lord, the God of their ancestors, verse 4 said. So this is a, a zealous response by a zealous king. And then he appointed judges in the land, and it lists an assortment of situations for judging. But he says, consider carefully what you do, because you're not judging for mere mortals, but for the Lord who is with you whenever you give a verdict. Friends, once again, we have to ask ourselves, is the Lord present whenever a judge renders a verdict between two individuals? Was this unique to Israel, or is this the situation in every court, every magistrate's court, every family court, you know, every every court of law in this country? Is the Lord present? Is the Lord observing the behavior of the judge every time the judge renders a verdict? And thereby, is the judge subject to higher judgment? And so the admonition from Jehoshaphat was, let the fear of the Lord be on you. Judge carefully. For with the Lord our God, there's no injustice or partiality or bribery. And friends, we need to make sure that in our courts, there's no injustice There's no partiality. There's no bribery. We don't want to believe that in the courts, the person that's able to afford the most expensive lawyer gets the best uh, judgment. There should be no injustice, no partiality, no bribery for every race, tribe, tongue, and creed. Everyone should receive equal justice under the law. So Jehoshaphat appoints um, Levites to settle disputes. And he tells them, you must serve faithfully and wholeheartedly in the fear of the Lord. You're to warn the people against sin, to make sure that they don't transgress the laws, commands, decrees, regulations, and act with courage. And may the Lord be with those who do well. So, Heavenly Father, we see this as um, a godly template for a godly judicial system. We pray for the United States, Lord, that from the Supreme Court to the lowest magistrate's court, should the people have the fear of God on them when they come into that situation? May the judges consider carefully that you're judging them as they hear the evidence. May judges judge carefully with no injustice, no partiality, and no bribery. Lord, have mercy on those judges who are in sin. Bring them to a place of righteousness. Forgive their sins and reconcile them to yourself, Lord. Lord, we pray for faithful judges at every level. God, we need a judicial system that is not partial towards one group or another, but that impartiality, the real justice of the law, under the eyes of our watchful God, that's what we're praying for. So, Lord, may you bring in those who will serve faithfully. May you bring in those who will serve wholeheartedly in the fear of the Lord. And, Lord, may you warn those who are sinning against you. We pray for courage among the judiciary. For those that serve you, may they do well. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.